Hello everybody, I am not dead yet, and today I am talking about Eddie Hall, who recently put out a video eating humble pie in his own words. And um, in it, he talks about the fight, what happened before, after, during, and kind of how he's feeling now that he's lost to Thor. So to start out, he actually starts by congratulating Thor and saying that he respects him as a man, as a strong man, as a boxer, as an athlete, and that I, he thinks that it's time for them to put their little feud back at what happened in World's Strongest Man 2016 behind them. And uh, yeah, I agree with that entirely. And he goes on to talk about the fight itself, saying that... Um, he was overly emotional, that he let his emotions get the better of him, and that he just really wanted to get in there and punch Thor in the face as hard as he could, and that uh, because of that, it didn't lend himself well to executing uh, his strategy. And I honestly believe him 100%. I don't think he really has any reason to lie. Some people could say, oh, well, it's to uh, save his ego and, and, and to save his image. You know, he, he got the shit beat out of him, and he just wanted to give a reason, but that is a valid reason. As somebody who's been in the ring before... Um, if you can piss your opponent off, that is, like, a huge advantage. Because the more angry someone gets, the easy, the more they're going to want to swing for the fences, the more they're really going to want to knock that smug grin off your face, and the more you can get an upper hand in a fight. It's why a lot of counterpunchers, and I've said this before in other videos if you've seen it, but it's why a lot of counterpunchers are such bastards. They have such devious personalities, there's a ton of trash talk, and because they're constantly trying to piss you off and get under your skin. It seems like Thor... Despite the fact that it seemed like Eddie was the one doing the more more mind games, was actually able to get under uh, Eddie's skin more than Eddie was able to get under Thor's, and it showed in the fight. And he even said that uh, he apologizes to his coach because he says that uh, obviously, as a fighter, you are a reflection of your coach. And even I said in my previous video where I talked about the ending of the fight and, and, and like kind of what happened through it. I'll link it. Um, I wondered what the hell was going on with his coach and why uh, Eddie was just simply s trying to swing for that one-punch knockout when in reality there was so much more he could have done to tip the fight in his favor. Eddie Hall answers that question here and he says that I was just too tunnel-visioned on trying to really just give it to Thor that I didn't execute the strategies to the best of my ability and I made my coach look bad because of that and he apologizes to his coach. So I think that's very fair. I think that's all well and good. But as we continue on, Eddie Hall talks about things that I have been saying for years. As somebody who has been in the sport for his entire life, Eddie Hall echoes sentiments that I believe to be 100% true, and that's when you fight somebody, and, and Eddie Hall says this specifically, when you fight somebody, after going the distance and after giving it and pushing your all, you guys walk away respecting each other. You, you almost have to when you um, push each other to that length. I suppose after a fight, you can't do anything but appreciate your opponent after the fight, no matter what happened beforehand, what happened during. And I think that appreciation is there because you know what's gone into it. You know how much blood, sweat and tears has gone into this, into the prep to that fight. And I suppose, you know, you've got to show that appreciation and appreciation to Ford's coach, Billy Nelson, you know, he deserves a pat on the back. And I've been saying that for years. Boxing, a lot of people think that like boxing is a sport where you two big burly men that hate each other get in there and beat the shit out of each other until someone falls. It's not that. In fact, most of the egos that I have uh, encountered in boxing come from the coaches who are no longer in the ring. But when it comes to fighters... Um, and yes, there, there are, you know, the tat jerk in every bunch that walks in and thinks that he's the god of the place and everybody else is beneath him. But... As a general rule, most fighters respect each other because they know what it takes to do it. They know just how hard it is to get into the ring and actually do that and win or lose, um, you, uh, you're, you're almost forced to respect your opponent. I have almost knocked somebody out, like, straight up. If he, if the ropes weren't there, I punched him, right? He whipped, his head whipped back, and he kind of fell off the ropes, bounced off the ropes, and I gave him another hard right. His head whipped back, and he landed on the ropes. Didn't bounce back this time, but if the ropes weren't there, he was going down. As soon as the fight was over, uh, everyone on that card, because one of the owners of the... Guy, one of the guys that was putting on the card owned a bar. He closed off the entire bar. All the fighters went and um, had drinks or, or, or ate something. I was too young to drink at the time, but I had nachos, and we played pool together. A lot of fighters respect each other because it's just such a difficult thing to do that you almost have to respect it. Hell, when I went to ringside for the second time, I made it 
to, uh, I, I won my first fight and went on to the second one. I ended up losing my second fight, but the guy I was up against ended up looking for me after the match was over. I was getting my stuff ready to leave the center, and as I was about to walk out the door, the, my opponent ran up to me and said, Hey, hey, stop, stop, stop. That was the most difficult fight I've ever had in my entire life. Can I get a picture with you? And I said, of course, and we took a picture together. I'd show the picture if I have, it, if I had it, but a lot of the memorabilia I have of my fighting days, I don't have right now. I'm currently trying to get it back. Long story. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so a lot of fighters have respect for each other, and that is something that I actually want to put forward more, because we see a lot of... Um, drama and and, and and big personalities in the sport and, and a lot of people do tend to end up seriously hating each other especially when there's a lot of money on the line but at the end of the day most fighters greatly respect each other and even if and you can go into a fight hating the other guy but walk out of it respecting him because again you both understand what it takes to do it eddie hall also said that uh speaking of respect and money that he was going to pay off everybody whom he owes money to uh thor will pick the charity and he'll pay all of that in terms of getting a tattoo because there was this bet between the two of them that the loser would have to get um the opponent's name and world's strongest man tattooed on their body somewhere eddie hall said he was going to do that uh so that's great he wants uh a rematch so that'll be interesting if he gets one but um in all, in all i've got nothing really to say about that eddie talks a little bit about what it takes to actually do it speaking of that and he talks about how it's it's way more difficult than people believe in and, and, and this is a world-class athlete here he talked about how he, he's been uh he's set records in swimming and, and again obviously strength and yet boxing was something else entirely, which again is something that I have said from the beginning, is that boxing is a completely different animal in terms of whatever sport you decide to do. Uh, boxers, or really combat athletes in general, are the best athletes in the world when it comes to overall physical fitness. Sure, there are people who are stronger than them, there are people who are faster than them, there are, there are people who have maybe a little bit more stamina, like long distance runners, or, or people who run uh, super marathons or whatever, but in terms of general, all around physical fitness, you will not find better than fighters because it needs a little bit of everything. You need a little bit of the weights and conditioning to build up your body to be able to dish out and take hits. You need to be able to do interval training because that's essentially what the rounds are. It's basically just interval training. You need to be, you need high intensity interval training. You need like hit cardio, true hit cardio because there are moments in the round that are big bursts of energy followed by lulls and then big bursts of energy followed by lulls and sometimes a full round, a full three minute round is a completely intense sprint imagine sprinting as hard as you can for three minutes that is what a round can be sometimes especially if you're in the amateurs a lot of the times the amateurs you only have three three minute rounds it is a sprint go 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 right so that is something I like to hear because again a lot of people I find especially with you know the youtuber boxing craze that's going around are greatly underestimating what it takes to actually be a boxer everybody's it seems like everyone's like oh I can do that and then they go and do that but to do it properly to do it well and to do it at the top level and, and be competitive it takes a lot, and even uh, Eddie and Thor have both said that any real boxer, someone like Tyson Fury, who is also in their weight class, would trounce them in all of those aspects. I think it's great that Eddie Hall is bringing, is bringing awareness of just how difficult the sport is, instead of being like, oh yeah, I'm the greatest, I'm the greatest, I'm the greatest. You know, like some other uh, YouTube boxers have, and I'm, I'm sure you can all think of a couple. Well, I've got a newfound respect for boxers because I know what goes into the prep. I know what goes in for the, for the thought process. I know what it takes for a man to walk through those ropes and face your opponent down and do the business. But one thing that I actually want to talk about that Eddie Hall touched upon in his video that I think that I can really add my own opinion on is the idea of like bullying or like the memes. And he talks about how like, you know, oh, uh, he got ripped apart and how like he can handle it, but some people can't. There was, he mentions a lady uh, who unfortunately ended up taking her own life due to harassment online because of some story. I'm not entirely sure um, about that situation. The media have been harsh. You know, the trolls have been harsh. All I'll say is, you know, people need to take a hard, hard look in the mirror sometimes because you don't know what damage you're doing. I'm a man, you know, I can take stuff like this, but people need to remember here in the UK, there was a story on a lady called Caroline Flack. 
who was on the back end of some bad media, some bad commenting, and this went on for a while. And she ended up taking her, her own life. Now, I'm not comparing myself to her, but I can understand why some people can get, you know, down and flustered on these kind of things. I do actually believe that the memes and kind of the uh, negative backlash that Eddie Hall has received due to all of his trash talk is unwarranted. And a lot of people will think, like, why? Like, he was very obnoxious and he was loud and, and he said a whole bunch of terrible things. I mean, he, he insulted Thor's mother and, and that even caused Thor to get angry, right? And, and like, because and I've even seen it on YouTube. Like after the fight happened, I, I had a video recommended to me uh, more than once where it was like Eddie Hall when trash talking goes wrong or whatever. I don't think it was when trash talking goes wrong, because specifically because of how Eddie Hall carried himself after he lost. Trash talking is a part of the sport. It always has been and it always will be. You need to be confident in yourself and you need to have that nobody can beat me mentality. If you go into the ring thinking I am going to lose, you will. It's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? And you can say, well, Eddie took it too far. But again, as shorter fighters, especially as people who are counterpunchers, you usually have to have that really abrasive personality to kind of get under their opponent's skin and try and mess with it and ultimately sell fights. It's why it's done. It's done in wrestling. The face and the heel, right? It's, it's something that is done. And so I don't actually hold a lot of weight to pretty much anything said before the match and i don't really i do my best not to hold fighters to anything they've said before the match on the condition that they are graceful with their loss and eddie hall was eddie hall again he started this video by saying how much he respected thor as a man as a boxer as a strong man and an and and, and, and as an athlete and um, you see fighters that aren't like that, that make excuse after excuse and continue to trash talk uh, their opponent, their team, uh, the suit that they wore walking out to the ring. And so you, it, that's not always the case. There isn't always this respect and humility shown. So the fact that Eddie Hall is simply willing to eat this humble pie is important, and I think it should be praised. I don't think you should be mocking somebody for being confident and for stirring up drama to um, sell the fight, because that is what it's doing. I think you should praise him for taking his lumps and being like, yeah, I talked a big game, I couldn't back it up, I respect Thor. Um, Ashita no Joe is my favorite story ever written. It's a manga and anime, and it is, it, it's a boxing anime that inspired a lot of your favorites, but it is my favorite piece of fiction ever written, and in it, they have one line that I think perfectly describes what I just said, and perfectly sums up my mentality when it comes to boxers, and it's, remember, the worth of a boxer is not determined by how he enters the ring. It is judged on whether or not the crowd cheers for him when he leaves it. And I think that is the way we should be looking at fighters. And I, th because in a multitude of ways, because you can have somebody who won the match, but, you know, if they were really shitty about it, if they were constantly running and it was like, oh, well, you know, you avoided fighting him the entire time. Like, what the hell? Like, okay, sure, you won, but like, you didn't fight. You can still, like, you, you people get robbed all the time, right? So there, there's that aspect of it. But I think that we need to also look at, like, don't necessarily judge a fighter's worth by the game he spits at the start. Judge him based off of how he reacts when he loses or when he steps out of the ring. Because you can even be a sore winner. You can be shitty. You can be dishonorable in both defeat and and in victory and i think if we apply that philosophy to eddie that we we shouldn't be clowning him too hard because he himself accepted that he talked game that he couldn't back up and i think that's important to um keep in mind and to not uh penalize and make fun of fighters for being confident in themselves and for accepting that hey 
I lost. On to Thor now. I actually don't have a whole lot to say about Thor's response. I think, again, it was very classy. I think he um, kept, it, kept it good. He said that he didn't really care about where, how big, or whatever Eddie Hall got the tattoo. He said, like, sure, go and get it. He trusts Eddie to be a man of his word, like Eddie says in his video. He said, you could even get it on your head where it will be covered by your hair. I do not care. Just get the tattoo. Um, he, he has not picked a charity yet because he wants to wait to get the money first, which is completely fair. Uh, but he did say one thing that really does interest me because he did say he is open to having a rematch with Eddie. Except, one, he wants to have the tattoo first, like, he wants Eddie to get the tattoo first, which, again, I think is fair. But two, I also, he also said that he believes that he doesn't want his next fight to be Eddie. He wants to gain experience, fight other people, uh, get better, and he wants Eddie to do the same so that they can meet again in the ring, maybe a couple years down the line, uh, both as more experienced, wiser, better fighters, to truly test their metal and see where they go. And honestly, I think that is a great idea. I think that's perfect, and I think that is what they should do. I don't think these two should rush out a uh, sequel fight as quickly as possible because one I think the fans will already kind of have an idea of what's going to go down they'll be like oh well we just saw this like six months ago like are you going to change up your strategy how drastically can you change it up in six months and by the way you can change up a lot in that time but uh, you know still if we're talking about general public here and two I really like this idea of encouraging people to truly better themselves as fighters before rushing into another pay-per-view to make money. Again, you see a lot of this shit with uh, a lot of the other YouTube boxers, but I think out of all the people who have put on spectacle boxing events, I have to respect Eddie and Thor the most. I think they were by far the most entertaining, and I think how they're handling themselves both in and out of the ring is the most respectful to the sport that I have seen and I would genuinely like to see both of them master their craft even more and get other fights get more experience and then meet again in the ring as better men stronger men faster men better individuals and truly test their metal to see who has improved over the amount of time that they have been training I truly think that that is um a lot more akin to the traditional way things go in these types of events, especially for people who are a lot uh, newer to the sport, as opposed to these bigger guys, uh, like more experienced guys, I mean, who can kind of drastically change up a strategy almost on the fly and whatever. I think for people who are, you know, still relatively new, I think that's a great idea and I think they should pursue that. But, um, yeah, that's really all I have to say. I mean, kudos to Thor for winning. Big ups on Eddie for being humble and accepting defeat uh, gracefully and honorably. And great job to the both of them for putting on not only the most entertaining YouTuber boxing event that I've seen, but probably the most respectful to the sport I have seen and probably will see for a while. So that is all I have to say for this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Please subscribe. It costs you nothing. and helps me out a ton. Uh, I would like to thank all the members of my Patreon who support me because, again, things are a little bit rough uh, in terms of money for me. So your support means a lot, both in a monetary sense and in a moral sense and encourages me to keep pushing out videos. If you want to support me in any way, all of my links will be in the description. All of my affiliates, PayPal, Patreon, donations, and uh, clicks, and everything else uh, are greatly appreciated. But until next time, remember, only the strong subscribe. I'm not dead yet, and if you are not either, there is always a tomorrow waiting for you.